Good morning. Everybody here this morning. Savior Jesus Christ on this the seventh Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday is Pentecost. Next Sunday will also be Confirmation Day. Uh, you'll all be receiving a letter, hopefully, sometime this week. Uh, basically letting you know what I'm about to tell you, which is we'll be back in the sanctuary on uh, Pentecost next Sunday. Uh, so there are people who are uncomfortable with rejoining us. We're still going to record the services, uh, but we will be back inside. Uh, all the state and local guidelines have said that is an okay thing to do, uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, so next Sunday will be confirmation with the Lord's Supper. Uh, we will be taking precautions inside. We're still going to do communion just like we're doing it out here, so that the only person that touches their elements person receiving them. Uh, and we'll be sanitizing the sanctuary according to the state uh, board health guidelines. Uh, we will be sanitizing the hymnals and whatnot, so uh, there shouldn't be any cause uh, for concern. We'll be maintaining social distancing inside. Uh, families can sit together, individuals six feet apart, and then when we do communion, we'll maintain the same distance. Uh, I'll be in the letter. Uh, that you'll be receiving this week. And uh, council, uh, three counts meeting very, very quickly after the service this morning. Okay, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my son. Almighty God, merciful Father. I, a poor miserable sinner. Confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you be a boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Glory, Glory be, be to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, Uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, the Sabbath day. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John. 
John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120. And said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Christ is risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around you like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to strengthen and preserve you in the true faith now into eternal life. Depart in joy and peace. Amen. Lord, now let us thou thy yes, servants depart, depart in peace, peace according, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou, thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and, and, and the glory of thy people. Glory be to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit. as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a blessed week. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. earth of all things, things visible, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father of the whole world, God, God of God, white flight, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to Scripture, and ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. Who spoke, spoke by the prophets, and I believe in the Holy Christian and the Apostolic Church, and I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I look, look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the, the world to come. come. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, and prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Now we don't need to stretch our imaginations very far to understand that if any individual acknowledges the devil as an adversary, 
the Apostle Peter. St. Peter's early career as a follower of Jesus Christ is a litany of profound moments of clarity and confession that salvation comes through faith in Christ alone. But between those moments lay the most profound failures, failures to comprehend and heed the teachings of his Lord and Savior. And those moments are demonstrated by words rooted in everyday stupidity. Anger, begotten by a lack of self-control, actions born out of sheer cowardice and unbelief. In other words, St. Peter, whose confession is the rock upon which the Church of Christ is built, is a sinner, just like you and me and everyone else who is born into sin. Peter knows what he's talking about based on first-hand interaction. He was brought low by his sins and his lack of faith. And upon Christ's resurrection from the dead, Jesus restored him and elevated him higher than he had ever been before. Just as you and I are lifted out of the depths of our transgressions and are reborn and raised higher than we ever could achieve on our own. Peter, restored in this way, writes to the early church to teach them from his own experience, his experience with Jesus, his experiences with his own sins, the sins of the world, the power of the devil to twist all of those things up. Peter tasks us with being vigilant, remaining sober-minded, to resist Satan's wiles, lest our souls become his next meal. And Peter calls our adversary a roaring lion on the prowl for the weak and the unguarded. Now a lion hunts with stealth and precision. The lion pads quietly on enormous paws, which can turn in an instant into a propulsion system almost unbelievable in a creature so large. There's just one problem. The prowling lion in our text this morning is neither quiet nor subtle. Why should he be? Our sins aren't quiet. Our sins are often not very subtle. The devil has no need for stealth or subtlety when we too often wear our sins like a matador's garish red cloak, which draws attention to the very worst in each of us. But Peter no longer needed to suffer for his sins because of the one who did that for him. Peter now has the strength of Christ. He didn't master his transgressions, but he no longer let them overcome him. So much so, in fact, that Peter was able to go joyfully to his death. Tradition tells us he was crucified upside down because he felt he was not worthy to die in the same manner as Christ. So the upside down cross is called the St. Peter's cross. It's a Christian symbol not a satanic one. You will even see pastors with an upside down cross on their red stoles. Guilt over our sins isn't the only kind of suffering in the life of a Christian. In fact, scripture, scripture tells us that the life of a Christian is expected to be one of suffering. We resist the devil, we resist the world's constant trying to undermine our faith, and we do that by the same strength obtained on the cross by Jesus. We come together as a community for mutual aid. St. Peter says, Further, <coughs> knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And what a blessing it will be come next Sunday to we'll once more worship together as that community inside our sanctuary. Just yesterday, one of our local newspapers had a column about having seen God's faithfulness before and that we will again. That's very nice. You don't see articles like that too often in the newspaper anymore. The author, quoting someone named Oswald Chambers, said, Your mind is the greatest gift God has given you and it ought to be devoted entirely to him. 
Therefore, let us keep a tight rein on our way of thinking, setting a guard over what goes in our eyes and our ears. Unconstructive, unrighteous thoughts and words can quickly taint us. For if our thought life gets polluted, then that will eventually influence our behavior. We act according to our outlook. So let's arm ourselves with strength by being disciplined and guarding our thought life. That's not too bad. That's good advice against the devil's whispering and the world shouting from every possible source of media, filling our heads with anything but God's desires for our lives. So there must be some good gospel about Jesus coming, or not. So don't speak doubt into your situation. Cast out defeatist views. Believe the best. Visualize victory. Turning your mind toward things that are pleasant, holy, and righteous. Let's combat negativity by surrounding ourselves with loving friendships, gathering goodness from life, clothing ourselves in joy, and being thankful for what is good and right. On the surface, that's good advice. But it's the world's advice. Remembering God's faithfulness in a time of suffering is merely remembering how well you coped while you were moonlighting as your own savior. The columnist does give us some scripture, in fact, the same scripture you're about to hear. But there's no connection to Jesus. There is no cross, no forgiveness of sins. And right there, you have the roaring lion, the devil, trying to make it all about you, what you can do to make your life more abundant. What about your neighbor? What about community fellowship? And most importantly, where is Jesus in all this? The problem with suffering in the life of a Christian is not that it is not only commonplace, but it is natural. Many well-meaning folks, and again, a lot of well-meaning pastors, want to scratch that itch in our ears. Because we want to hear that God wants us to have good health, to have wealth, to have security if only you believe hard enough. Or as our columnist recommended in the paper, thinking good thoughts. Jesus never said any such thing. Jesus said instead that because we confess his name, we share in his suffering. As Peter tells us this morning, Jesus tells us that the world will hate us for it. St. Paul said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And Peter again tells us, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes to test you, as though something strange were happening to you ancient and medieval metallurgists called refining precious metals by melting off all the contaminants, proofing by fire. The proof of the metal's purity was the fact that it came through the fire unscathed. Bakers proof yeast by observing the dough rise. The proof, if you will, is the fact that if the dough rises, then the yeast must be very much alive and doing its job. The Greek word that Peter uses for fiery trial is pyrosis, in which we can hear our word pure, pyrosis. It makes us think back to Jesus saying, I've come to cast fire on the earth. It makes us look forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit as tongues of fire on Pentecost next Sunday in Buster's Confirmation. And we also, as disciples of Christ, are proved by fire. And we come out the other side of that flame, not only intact, but purified. Declared holy by the blood of Christ shed on the cross. This is what the life of a Christian is all about. And that's what Jesus is talking about in the portion of the high priestly prayer we heard in the gospel this morning as they walked to the Garden of Gethsemane. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. We 
are still in the world, not to ensure that we have an abundant life, but to make disciples of all nations and to be an aid to our neighbors' abundant life. And it is actually freeing, very freeing, to experience a life of service to others, others in your family, others in your community, others you encounter in line at the grocery store. It does not matter. And a community like ours has brothers and sisters who are then looking out for your abundant life. We here, bound in time, share in Christ's suffering. But we will also, unbounded in eternity, will share in Christ's glory. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Because disciples proved by fire are one in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. saints from fiery trial and raised up the martyr from the darkness of death to everlasting life. Give us courage that we may give bold witness to the truth in our own day and proclaim Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, you have pledged to us your spirit and promised to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come, that we may never be without aid of those who serve us in your name. Lord, you have the power over all things and appoint an order to the earth for the protection of the weak, the punishment of evildoers, and the encouragement of virtue. Bless our president, our governor, all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom for the challenges of our times, and preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, you have compassion upon all who suffer. Give grace to the sick, to those with mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Hear us especially for all those we now name to you in our hearts. Grant them patience in their afflictions and deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach, those who learn, and especially those who graduate this year. Be the hopes of those whose plans have been disappointed, and grant that all graduates would find good employment. Guide them in the pursuit of your word and truth, to live honorable lives and worthy vocations, that in all things you may be glorified. Lord, you have given us your own Son as our Savior and Redeemer. He has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies, that we might be fed upon the body of Christ and drink his blood. Guard the unity of this table, that we would confess him with one voice, and receive this blessed sacrament with one faith. And here in our prayers for all who are before the gathering has been made difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith until we are with you in your presence forevermore. Guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he might devour. Grant us the power to resist him and to trust in you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is neat and right so to do. It is truly neat, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of, his, of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, praising you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 